Okay, well, look at this for an intro. Um, so, um, first of all, just a massive thank you to everyone who responded to the previous video. Loads of really interesting discussions, um, sort of uh, really valuable opinions and stuff like that. So thank you for that. Some really useful stuff. And a particular thank you to my members. There's been some really interesting discussions uh, with my members on this as well. Um, yeah, the good news is I fixed that car. Um, the bad news is that one's arrived and it doesn't charge. That's Daniel's. And um, that one just arrived last night. Can't remember the dude's name, sorry. Um, but yeah, that one doesn't drive. I uh, haven't actually tested charging. Um, but yeah, it seems to be a standard question these days when people um, deliver me a car for repair is will my car be on YouTube? So um, yes, a bit strange phenomenon, but um, there we are. So yeah, they've come. That's obviously my car with the battery leaf. Um, but before we get onto that, I've created a Google form. And this is for if you have a current lease or you've um, had a lease, and uh, basically, I was kind of thinking that one way or another, I'll resolve the lease situation on this car. Okay, this is only one car. Okay, you know, um, I might win the court action. Uh, Renault might just end the lease to make me shut up. Um, we don't know. We'll see. But this is one car. Okay, and what happens with this one car might, you know, might cause some other things to happen. But I think there's a bigger issue here, really. And I think that that's because a big company are pushing people around one after another. Um, and when they say these are your only options, you have to take one of them. But really, I think that's not good enough, frankly. So what I was kind of thinking is it'd be really useful if you have a current lease or you've previously had a lease and you've ended it. Um, the Google Forms just got a few questions um, about sort of what happened to you and if there's anything interesting, you can um, put it in the box there description box but it's just because if we can gauge how big this issue is that would be really useful and I, I mean I've been staggered to be honest by the amount of um, response and comments and things from um, the previous video of people just obviously concerned and people who've paid to get out of it or that kind of thing I mean the number of issues so I talked last time about a car that was a write-off but had a battery lease, and that's this car. So this car represents one of the failings of the battery lease. So this car was written off, and um, it's had a little bump at the front. You can kind of see there's a bit of arch liner missing there. So it's had a bump, and at that point, so this car effectively has finance on it. It has a finance agreement, which is what the battery lease. If you HPI check it, it's not a clean, as they describe it. It has finance recorded against it. But the insurance company just paid out the owner. Well, the insurance company has acted incorrectly, and this car should not have a battery lease. It should have been paid off by the insurance company. But that didn't happen. And that's the, really the failing with this battery lease process. It's not been thought through. A bit like ending the lease has not been thought through because the dealer doesn't care. He's not interested in taking the battery out, which is meant to be one of the options, as we talked about last time. But the dealer doesn't care. They're a third party. They're, they're not interested at all. So, yeah, that represents a massive issue. I actually rang Mobilize and said, oh, I've just got a car in from a customer. It's got a battery lease and it's a write-off. And you don't really get anywhere, basically. The person on the phone just kind of parrots away the options because they don't know anything. They're not empowered to make any decisions. They don't really know it in detail. They just find out the options and tell you what they are. And that's it. So, you know, I advise the customer to probably write them an email and see what happens. But, yeah, we shall see. So... On this one, what's happened? So I've looked into um, the uh, claims process, small claims. They advise to give companies 14 days to reply. So it's probably been about um, eight or nine days. So fine, I need to give them a bit longer. That's absolutely fine. Um, I've kind of got all my evidence all ready to go. It's all pretty straightforward, really. It's in black and white. One of the really interesting comments, actually, um, on the last video was someone talked about frustration of contract, which is where you've got a contract with someone, but for whatever reason, they're not, you know, they're not fulfilling their side of the contract. And that's effectively what's happening here. You know, I want to take up an option that's written in black and white in the contract, but I can't do it. I want to give this battery back because I don't want it anymore. And I'm happy to take it back 
to where you know or a, a um, you know a representative of the place I picked it up from so I'm happy to take it back to a dealership it's picked up from a dealership it has to be a ZE dealership yeah fine whatever you know I'll take it back but effectively at the moment they're not accepting it because I don't know what to do with it because they're a third party they're not the finance company so the contract is falling apart the frustration of contract I thought was really good um, really good wording so um, in the meantime I received a phone call from Renault UK customer services and that was because at one point when I was talking to Mobilize the Finance battery finance company they said that return of the battery has to be arranged uh, through um, Renault UK like Renault centrally so I said okay fine that's not what the last person said but fine so I spoke to Renault UK customer services um, and they after a while came back and said oh you have to arrange it with your dealer and that's where we're just going around in circles but um, because I'd rung Renault Central Customer Services, they had my details and rung to just make sure that everything was fine and everything had been sorted. And obviously I told them that, no, it hasn't, because the dealer doesn't know what I'm talking about. And they were very surprised, um, or maybe just thinking, you know, pretending they were surprised. But basically Renault have um, advised that they will chase up my local dealer, because in their eyes this is a really simple process. But um, yes, obviously it's not happened at all. Um, so I did get a phone call back from um, the parts guy that I spoke to first and he got more information but nobody's called me called me back from then on so which is which is pretty poor to be honest but we will see what happens sort of as I said last time I really expected to have been presented with a, a quote for the sort of 1400 that people have been advising um, and we'd be talking about whether that's fair and valid because those charges are not mentioned in the contracts and it's a um, it's a finance agreement effectively all these things are regulated there are rules um and yeah charges should be fair and reasonable charges should be laid out in the contract and none of that has been done but we haven't even got that far which just highlights how much of a farce the, the whole process is uh, one of the reasons for the google form is because that return fee that people have been talking about having been quoted, that's sort of 1400 roughly, and that basically breaks down as about four to 500-ish for um, a Renault to do the diagnostic check and uh, remove the battery and book the courier and stick it in the courier's special box. And so like the labor charge effectively. Um, and then about nine-ish hundred to ship it back to France um and i think that is completely outrageous and is worldly outside you know the terms and the spirit of the contract so i think if a lot of people have paid for that process to take place i think we've got good grounds for a claim there in that you know people are being excessively charged and if we can get you know lots of people filling in the form that says yeah i paid 1400 i paid 1500 or um, or I did a buyout because I couldn't even arrange the return, stuff like that, then we've got a clear pattern and a, and a group of people, an amount of people, members of the public, who've either overpaid to buy a battery because of frustration of contract, because something that was stated as possible in the contract couldn't be carried out, or who've been charged excessive fees because they've been charged really sort of you can't even say over and above because there are no fees stated but have been charged excessively for something you know that's stated in the contract but in no way indicates that that it will be of that level so i think um it would be really interesting if we can get together and if you've got a group of people then who've got a valid claim then you know then we can start looking into more wider legal options and i think that's really what could come out of this this car this is just one car you know and i'll sort this out one way or another you know but realistically we've got a bigger problem of this not being handled correctly i mean the whole situation is a bit of a farce in the first place in that you know these these end scenarios were not thought through I know of a few people who've um, like traded in their car or sold it one way or another, but and they've still been paying the battery lease. And that's like so they traded it in for a new car. Okay, fine. So you give the the dealer the paperwork when you trade it in, and you need to fill this in. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll fill it in, we'll fill it in. But they're not that bothered. It's sat on their forecourt. It might be there for a few months. They don't want to pay the battery lease, so they don't fill it in. Or um, the other issue is that Renault Finance used to be incredibly slow when you sent them the paperwork. 
um, and I've had this in the past. So you send the battery lease form. Um, so you, uh, the new owner has to fill in their details. So it's an initial application form. And then the existing uh, battery lease holder signs it and the existing battery lease holder sends it in. So you're the, you've got the lease and you send it in because it's your, you know, in your name currently that you want to transfer it. They used to just not reply. There was, there was probably about 18 months ago or so, you, you had to phone them to chase them up to say, I've sent you a form, can you please process it? Otherwise, they just wouldn't. And it was just insanely ridiculous. So, yeah, it's badly handled. But I think one of the biggest issues is, is this end of lease options. If you could return the battery, let's say, let's say that things were fair and reasonable. If you could return the battery to a ZE dealership and pay them, what's reasonable? I don't know, 500 quid? Something like that. That would probably be fair, I think. You know, it's sort of specialist. They've got to book a courier to somewhere. Um, you know, we would probably just suck that up, I think, you know. But charging people 14, 1500 quid and saying it's got to be shipped back to France is just insane. That's not a restocking fee. That's international shipment of what is technically cast as hazardous goods when it goes to, you know, to courier it. And to put that on the leaseholder, and you're holding them to ransom effectively. So, and I think that's well outside of what's in the sort of consumer contract fairness um, laws. Because um, it's a regulated contract. You know, consumers are protected, consumers are protected against unfair fees. And I think that's what this is. I think people are being held to ransom. And I think we should do something about it. So whatever happens with this car, I think the cat's out of the bag. I think this has become a bigger issue now. And um, there's a couple of suggestions. I've got sort of YouTube lawyers in the comments, which is really interesting. And if we can gauge the size of this, then we can get a discussion going with one of those and say, right, you know, we've got 100, 200, I don't know, 500 people who are in this situation or have overpaid. And I think then we can really do something about it. So I hope that was interesting. By next week, it's likely the claim will have gone in or some other options, you know, something else will have happened. But yeah, an absolutely massive thank you if you've replied um, and commented. Keep that information coming. And well, yeah, we'll do something about it. So take care and I'll catch you later. Cheers.